Imagine a game that takes the best parts from Call of Duty Zombies, which is the maps, the Easter eggs, the massive killing of the hordes of the undead, the guns, the upgrades, and then it adds lore, story, roguelite mechanics, and bosses to the mix. A game that's solely dedicated to reaching its full potential in the genre. Skur Ritual attempts to do this, so for this video, I want to break it down for you guys. If you didn't already know, my name is Guhi. I'm excited to get into the nitty gritties of this game with you today. There are two questions I want to answer by the end of this video, first of which is, does it work? And then we'll go into, is it worth the money? In order to answer these questions, I want to dive into a couple of categories here, first of which is going to be the Steam reviews, seeing how the community feels about this game. And then we're going to look at the game as it is, what's available for us to play right now. We'll do a quick overview of the lore and then get into the meat and potatoes of the entire video, the chunk of the video, which is going to be the gameplay. Lastly, we'll look at the promised content, what the devs have said is coming for the future of this game. Lots of cool stuff to talk about here, so stick around. But first, let's go into the reviews of the game. Steam reviews, to be more exact, for the most part, have been very positive. You get comments like zombies, but playable, which is pretty comical. And then there are people that take the time to write very detailed and intricate reviews on Steam, like this one. Good gum. All jokes aside, the main consensus of the game is that it is a bit janky, but for the most part, people recommend it if you like the OG COD Zombies. This is something that I actually saw several times throughout the comments, but I don't think I necessarily agree with it. The biggest reason why I disagree with the fact that it's like OG COD Zombies is because it takes a lot of aspects and a lot of the gameplay mechanics from the newer Call of Duty Zombies and implements that into this new fresh experience. With that being said though, I think a lot of people are actually comparing this game to the OG COD Zombies because of the fact that they have very similar weapons and weapon feel, but I'll let you guys be the judge of it. Let's actually dive into the game itself. Starting with the lore. Oh boy. <laughs> I want to give you guys fair warning. I don't necessarily fully understand it myself, but I'm going to try to explain it best as possible. <laughs> there is this evil woman, all right? And this evil woman has an evil voice that broadcasts and somehow controls people's minds. This evil woman performs evil experiments that are ritualistic in nature that end up making these monsters or disfigured beings. From the beginning cutscene, what we can tell is that the evil woman's daughter sets you out as a soldier to stop her from broadcasting her evil signal. This mystery nice lady warns you that the mother will send evil ones or the quiet ones after you, which is a complete lie. None of the people that are sent after you are quiet at all. All of them are extremely extremely loud and like to gurgle in your face as if they had 70 years of bronchitis. And that's how we're set up throughout the game. The woman that we meet or the nice lady that sets us up on our adventure will talk to us throughout the entire game as we progress through the maps, etc, etc. Here's where I'm going to inject some personal opinion. I think they missed the mark on this. From the very beginning with the initial cutscene, it seems like it's going to be a very story heavy and lore heavy game, but then you quickly realize that it's just the initial cutscene that sets up the lore and then the rest of the game is almost the same as Call of Duty Zombies, which is not much story, not much lore, just some random tasks that you have to do from this random person that you don't even know that you're not even invested in. This is where the game misses the mark on setting itself apart from just being a Call of Duty clone. It could have definitely gone further into making an intriguing story that you really wanted to invest a lot of time and effort into, but it's not really that interesting past like I said, the initial cutscene. And because of this, they're going to miss out on potentially hitting an entirely new target audience. There are people that like Call of Duty Zombies because it's mindless and fun and, and lots of violence or whatever, but then there are people that don't like it because it's lacking story. So the people that don't like it because it's lacking story would have been invested and would have liked this game more than just your average zombies mode if they had added and capitalized on that, but they didn't. Moving on though, let's actually talk about the overall mechanics of the game in no particular order. Getting some of the bad out of the way, there are major balancing issues throughout the game and I think a lot of people that have played it will agree with me. Weapon upgrades are hella expensive and they don't do dick for damage. There is this supercharger in the game, which is essentially just a pack of punch. It's the same concept, same idea, and it doesn't do enough for later stages in the game, especially for how much it costs to upgrade a weapon. It's, it's ridiculous. You get two items at the start of the game. First is your consumable, which is your health, and then it's your grenade, which is a throwable. Both of these items are going to be on a cooldown. The grenade is but the damage on it is but the AOE spread of the grenade, which you would expect to at least be able to hit 
three zombies is, but it only hits one. Or if you miss two centimeters to the left of the zombie, it doesn't even attempt to do damage on its foot. It's ridiculous. It's it's almost like I don't even want to use the grenade or I forget it exists because there's no way to upgrade it. There's no way to use it in a way that is significant to me. Uh, maybe it's a personal preference type deal. Maybe it's a personal opinion type deal. The health file on the other hand works really well. It is on a cooldown and I like that it's on a cooldown because I'm not frantically looking for loot that will give me health or frantically trying to buy health items. It's just, hey, you know, I'm using it. It's now on a cooldown. Down, make sure I'm not going to get myself in a sticky situation so I don't need to use it anytime soon. So I like it. I like the mechanic. I like the fact that it's on a cooldown. The only issue that I have with the vial is, and I know I feel like I'm complaining so much, but it's just, it's balancing issues and it's frustration points. It's the fact that it takes so long for the health to actually take effect in the middle of the animation. So I'll be drinking the vial, I'll be thinking I'm good to go, and I'm still taking damage and I still end up dying. And you will see me finish the vial animation, even though I finish the vial animation, I'm dead on the floor. So it doesn't make any sense to me. It looks like it takes effect a little bit too late, but that's something that they could easily fix if a lot of people have the same issue, or maybe it's just a skill issue and I suck and I need to get good. Next, I want to talk about a special ability that you get when you earn miracles. Miracles is something that I will go into detail later on in the video, so bear with me here, but it's a special ability that you get that's a little bit overpowered. This has to do with the balancing issues. Depending on which special ability you get it will, you know, determine the elements and everything whatever but it's completely overpowered it's like on the other side of the balancing issues where it's not gonna do too little damage but it does too much damage it's definitely meant to be an oh shit button which is cool it's good but it's not satisfying at all you just like you hit this ability and all of a sudden you look around and things are croaking very slowly next to you as they fall over and they are dead moving on to something actually positive though i feel like i've been absolutely dogging and trashing on this game let's let's move on and talk about something good the puzzles and easter eggs are definitely a highlight of this game they are fun they're simple they're easy to figure out for the most part so you have two types of puzzles the mainline puzzles which are not super easy but they definitely hold your hand a little bit more showing you where you need to go and how you need to complete whatever it is that you need to complete and then there's the easter eggs the harder to find puzzles that will eventually give you either a greater weapon or you know a better ending or a secret ending or something like that so it's a lot of secrets within secrets within secrets type of situation and it's done really well the puzzles are fun to figure out and you get a good sense of progression as you go through and do the tasks that you need to do. Since we're on the topic of progression, let's talk about it. There are two types of progression in the game. There's permanent progression and then there's per game progression, per level, per mission progression. The permanent progression is done through the perks. You can upgrade your perks in the main menu screen and then when you go and play and you, you know, buy the perk within the round, it'll give you a little status boost effect. I like games that have permanent progressions, especially in roguelike games because it makes it feel like you're actually getting somewhere when you're playing through the game and it's not just a loop doing the same thing over and over again. You're actually working towards something. The mission to mission progression is good as well. It's like I said, it, it really has to do with what I already talked about, the puzzles and the Easter eggs. You do these tasks and you progress through the world and then eventually you get to the end boss and beat the map. It's really straightforward. But let's talk about enemy variety now that we've hit on bosses. Each map will have its own unique big bad guy, but essentially there are three types of bosses. This is the best way that I can describe this. The first type is your in-game boss, which is your in-betweener rounds boss that comes in and wrecks butt. This boss is gonna be stronger than your regular whatever walkie zombies guys walkie zombies guys yes very good the problem with these in between or round bosses is that they're completely unbalanced they're way 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 too spongy you will put 15 clips into these guys and they'll still be more than halfway on their health bar it's almost ridiculous i don't know why they're so unbalanced because the rest of the bosses in the game are actually pretty well balanced the second type of boss that you'll see is progression type bosses without giving you guys too many spoilers i'm going to be talking about bosses that happen in the quote-unquote second map available to you in the game. I'll keep it super vague. There is a task that you need to do and in order to complete the task you need to beat a couple of bosses throughout the map. But yeah, so you have that second type of boss and this type of boss is actually pretty cool because you see a boss like health bar and their name at the bottom of the screen kind of like a souls game. So that is a unique aspect that they added in this game versus, you know, comparably other COD titles. And the last type of boss that there is is the end map boss, which is just a bigger version of that 
big bad boss that is unique to each of the maps. But it's cool because it's like an arena type boss fight where you have to fight this boss and a bunch of other zombies and it's pretty difficult and it gets pretty hectic and the boss has a bunch of different, you know, mechanics and stuff that you have to avoid and duck dive, dodge, and dip, and hit, and kill. And then once you kill him, you beat the map and you move on to the next one. Moving on from bosses though, different enemy types is actually really varied. There are screamy enemies, there are teleporty enemies, there are sprint enemies, there are flaming enemies. So it's, it's just a good, good variety of enemies that you'll encounter throughout the game so that it doesn't get stale. Let's talk about the maps. Each one of them has their own enemy types and their own unique tasks that you have to progress through in order to beat the map. They're actually really cool aesthetically and each one brings something unique to the table, but comparatively, it's not the best looking. I hate to do this because it's really not fair to compare a game that has a small development team like Skur Ritual and then a game that has almost infinite pockets like Activision's Call of Duty. But because it is a clone, I feel it's important to at least look at the differences in quality. Call of Duty Zombies has maps that are visually stunning, detailed, the effects and the graphics are top tier, high quality. This game could be better graphics wise. It could have better elemental and weather effects and everything in between. But for what it is and for the price point, I think it more than justifies it. Just go into it understanding that for the lack of a better term, it is a cheaper looking version of Call of Duty Zombies. Let's move on to a big hitter here, the gun overview. The types of guns that you'll find available to you throughout the game are actually older. They're not modern weapons. By that, I don't necessarily mean like revolution era guns where you know it's this big rifle that you have to clean out and put the little pebbles oh pebbles what peblets are they peblets they're peblets right that was the ammunition that they used and then you got to put in the gunpowder and like pack it in and shoot it and it might kill you or blow your hand off. Not that old of weapons. More like World War II old weapons. You got your rifles, your SMGs, your pistols. It's a pretty basic set of weapons with unique ones sprinkled in here and there. Now I'm just picturing having to reload one of those guns in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. It's just like, oh, it's coming, bro. The gunplay itself is actually solid. It's one of the first things that I noticed about this game is that it's really, really solid and good feeling gunplay. The reloading animations are a little bit long, but they're fine because they're satisfying. The bloom isn't overbearing and the overall feel of the weapons is really solid. It's good, it's satisfying. It makes sense for the types of weapons that there are. One small complaint, and I have to mention this, is that the weapon takes over your entire screen. There is one weapon that takes over your entire screen when you look down the sides. It's almost overbearing. It's almost like I never wanted to to aim down sights with that weapon it never made sense to because it was like why is this why is this all i'm seeing on my screen i can't even see the zombies all i'm seeing is gun metal in my face so small complaint there a couple weapons did that but for the most part they felt good on the other hand though the other style of weapon that you will find throughout the games is your melee weapons and those are just dog butt they actually they suck they're so bad they feel like an afterthought in the game i had the opportunity to pack a punch or to supercharge whatever it's called in this game a couple of different melee weapons and a the hit registration on the melee weapons is really really bad it feels super inconsistent it doesn't feel satisfying or right when you hit something and b they don't do nearly enough damage for the amount of danger that you're putting yourself in by being in closer quarters with your enemy matter of fact even if it wasn't more risky to use melee weapons because of the distance factor, it still wasn't worth using them. It didn't feel like they were viable at all, especially late game and or if you're playing in the harder difficulties. Keep in mind, I used and upgraded most of the ones from the boxes that you can get out in the world. I don't know if there's like an OP melee weapon that exists that I just never got to use yet, but for the most part, melee weapons are just no, no bueno, no good, do not recommend. 0 out of 10. Quick mention before I move on because I just thought of it. The mystery boxes in Call of Duty Zombies, you see that, but it's a different version of it. It's just Lucky the dog. And you see the doggo, you can buy randomized stuff from him. He might give you something good. He might give you something shite. You use him enough and he'll disappear and go to a different location in the map. Same concept, nothing new, but it's a dog and it's cute and yay. Okay. Let's talk about gameplay. We already talked about the consumable and throwable being on a cooldown. We kind of skimmed over that, but it's a good feature. The hit registration for the guns feels good for the melee weapons. Again, 
reiterating, sucks. The player hitbox is a little bit janky, in my opinion. I'm being super nitpicky because I literally went in and tested it. I'll show the example here on screen. But it was super inconsistent being hit from one zombie type to another. Sometimes you'd be hit before the animation would even start to hit you. Other times you'd be far away enough to not get hit, but still get hit. So like I said, super inconsistent. But for the most part, it was not unbearable. It was playable. And I only noticed it because it frustrated the hell out of me sometimes when I thought I was out of the way and I got hit and I was like, why am I dying? To be fair though, I played on like nightmare difficulty on my first round for some reason because I'm a masochist with my buddies and we got our asses handed to us. The audio in this game is... It's good and bad. I like what it does with like the menu sound effects. Everything is like a gunshot or something crazy that just blows up your eardrums. I don't know if may maybe people might not like that, but I like it because it it's very impactful. I like when menu sound effects do something that makes you feel like you are clicking through the menu. What the fuck? It's like gunshots. <laughs> The zombie sound effects are cool. I like, for the most part, their little groans and wails. The footsteps for the zombies are really good sounding, but the footsteps for your playable character are atrocious. It sounds like you've got 20 feet instead of two. I'll let you guys hear for yourselves. So yeah, that, that can be really annoying because you literally can't get away from it. It's your own character that has the 20 feet. I mentioned briefly that I played this with my buddies. I want to talk about multiplayer for a second here. The way that it works is pretty simple. It's really straightforward and it works really well. You just invite somebody from your friends list to your party. They join. You can either play a private match or a matchmaking match if you want it to fill in with random people. You get into the game, you play. It works. The performance, on the other hand, did not work well for me. I do want to mention that at the time of filming this, I played on West Coast servers and my buddy was playing on the East Coast servers, so it could have been a factor of the server differences were not jiving at the time, but we were getting issues like rubber banding, really bad lag, to the point where it was just absolutely unplayable. We checked our internet, it was working fine. We checked our ping, it was working fine, but we were still having these issues where the game was unplayable. Again, though, I want to reiterate that I have not confirmed that these issues are server-wide and these were just issues that i was personally having and felt like i needed to bring up for you guys next let's go over the difficulties really quick there are beginner easy normal hard and nightmare difficulties i'll leave these on the screen if you guys want to pause them and read through them and see what each one of the difficulties will bring to the table next we'll talk about the cosmetics which to be completely honest with you are not that important to me but i know some people go cuckoo for cocoa puffs for these types of things you can unlock different masks for your character you can unlock different player icons you can unlock background music for your menu sounds. You can unlock different menu themes. And lastly, you can unlock voice lines for your character, which are absolutely hilarious. I don't know if they were intended to be, but bring it on. Ah! Bruh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, let's talk about the miracles. I know you probably thought I forgot about them, but no. I saved them for last specifically because I think this is what sets this game apart the most from any Call of Duty zombies. The miracles are your roguelike mechanics. The way that it works is after a round, you get a miracle point. And with this miracle point, you can get one of three perks or status boosts or upgrade or ability. These upgrades or abilities will be completely random choices that come up every single round, which will allow you to very uniquely create a build for your character in that specific round and only that round. For example, you can focus on just choosing miracles that give you more weapon damage. Or you can choose to go into miracles that add specific abilities to your arsenal. Like the ones I mentioned before that are absolutely OP and will just obliterate everything around you kind of unsatisfactorily. Unsat unsatisfyingly. Unsatisfyingly. Factorily. I'm tired okay <laughs> no judgy essentially this is a great idea this is an awesome concept and i think it works really well for this type of game and this genre of game but unfortunately it's not well executed the abilities and the things that you can choose with your miracle points are just not impactful i've gotten to the point where every time i play this game it doesn't feel like i'm 
getting a unique experience because of the miracle points. I just kind of ignore them and choose random stuff with them and then go on to play the Call of Duty Zombies clone. So unfortunately, this is yet another thing that they missed the mark on that could have really set themselves apart from just being that janky clone. That wraps up the game overview. And now we can finally answer the question, does it work as a game? Absolutely. It is a solid game. It is a solid experience and it is a solid take on the genre. Unfortunately, I don't think it fully realizes its potential. I don't think it fully capitalizes on everything that they could have done in order to set themselves apart. Yes, it is a copy and paste of the content, but it's also something fresh and something new. In order to answer the next question, I want to look at the promised content. What the devs have said is coming for the game in the future. So here's the issue. I've spent a lot of time in their Discord. I've spent a lot of time on their Steam page, in their patch notes, and on their website, and there is nothing confirming future maps, future weapons, future DLCs. That is a bit concerning, but at the same time, being active in their Discord and blah, 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 everything that I just said, the devs have said that they do want to fully realize this game by polishing what they already have and focusing on that. So keeping all of that in mind, does this game justify the price tag? Is it worth buying? There's a lot of game here. If you're an Easter egg hunter, if you enjoy playing through all of the difficulties, you got your progression in the perks, you got unlockables for your cosmetics if you're into that. With the right polishing and the right tweaking, this game has a lot of potential and where it's at right now, I do believe it's worth the price tag. It's always baffled me that COD has never published a standalone Zombies title. It's like they never quite knew how to capitalize on the popularity of that mode. Zombies has always kind of acted as a palate cleanser between multiplayer and the main story campaign. But the best part about this mode, like I said before, is the fact that it's simple, it's clean, and it's fun. Add a little pizzazz to that, and as a game, it works. Skur Ritual is the prime example. Other Call of Duty modes have actually been expanded into full blown games and have been super successful. For example, Search and Destroy. If you look at it, Search and Destroy was the model for games like CSGO, Rainbow Six Siege, and Valorant. And those games have done a fantastic job by using those building blocks to create their own entirely unique experiences. So yes, I believe COD should have done this a long time ago. They should have created a standalone game that capitalizes on everything that people love and expands on what the genre lacks to make it fresh, new, and exciting. Join the discussion, you guys. If you have been playing this game, let me know down below what you are hoping to see in the future. Future. That's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to make your sacrifices to the algorithm gods, okay? They get very angry. Leave a like on the video. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!